So what's your favorite part about playing Eleanor? Oh my gosh, well definitely the poker. I studied up on Texas Hold'em and was so excited to think that I could convince anyone that I could be a poker, like a high stakes poker player and be really good at it. So it was fun to research and the funny thing was when we went to Vegas the second season, I studied enough to think that I could sit down at the no limit table even though it was only like eight. And I thought, oh, this looks pretty tame, this crowd. I brought my, my $200 and I was fleeced in 10 minutes. <laughs> in fact, after my last hand, this guy who I just totally wrote off is like, well, I can take this guy. He's just like, <laughs> and then the woman looks at me and she's like, should we hold your spot? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm done, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> so I figured I'm just gonna pretend really well, just, much easier. Did you have any trepidation or any worry about doing an Amazon series? You know, I mean, I didn't know much about, obviously I became a Prime member when the show came around, but I had seen Transparent and was a huge fan. So I thought, if anything, maybe this is going to be a whole new frontier in TV, which it proved to be. I mean, I, I knew Titus Welliver beforehand, so I was excited by the prospect of working with him. But when I met the team, Henrik Bastin and Jean and all those guys, they, Peter Jean, they were so um, excited by the creative process. And I think Amazon was as well. They knew they had, they knew the stories they were going to tell because they had such a big fan base with the books that it just became a free for all for them in that we could go make what we needed to make and they kind of let us alone. And now they're, they're so pleased with the way it's coming out that it's, it's exciting to get to go to work. So, yeah, it's been nothing but positive. Are you a big TV watcher, a binge TV watcher? I binge when I get to watch. Yeah. So I was saying, I think the last time I was here was in 2010, and I just watched all six seasons of Damages, and then there was Ted Danson, and I was like, I was catatonic <laughs> because I felt like I knew him so well and it was such a different character for him. So when I do watch, it is completely binging. Like I think Xander and I sat down and watched the first season of Downton Abbey and then we were like, we are the last to the table to watch Downton Abbey. But you know, we only got through the first or second season and then, you know, you just have such a limited time. I, I watched all of Transparent when I was sick. I watched the whole second season and that was fun to see it in one go. I mean, it's, it, it makes it so it's like you're reading a novel, you know, you're really getting this fleshed out experience. But it's easier when it's only 10 episodes or six episodes, yeah. like when it's 22 episodes, you just can't do it. <laughs> so you have some other TV news too. You did some guest starring on NCIS. I did. How was that? It was fun. It was a completely different experience because it is such a... A machine at this point and and Michael Weatherly who, I mean first of all everyone was so lovely Emily Wittersham all of them I, I truly adored working with them Mark Harmon but it was a emotional time for everyone because of the transition with Michael so I felt Dwayne and I were sort of in our own island while we were working just for that alone but I, I Gary you know was he was very persuasive as to why he wanted me to come, and I was I was sucked in. I was like, absolutely, and it was a fun character to get to play. So, do you know will there be a continuation with that character? Well, I don't know. I mean, we know I have Bosch coming up, so they're they're sort of like, well, they liked the way the two went, but they know that there's a big hole to fill with Michael leaving, and they don't quite know the shape of the show, so we're kind of leaving it all open right now. They're on vacation. I think they like having a little vacation before I'm fine with it too because with the girls and everything else I'm just sort of keeping it all open right now. You also were on one of the most groundbreaking shows 24. Yeah. When you were living that experience did you realize how big it was? What do you remember about that time? Well it was groundbreaking for me in that I was in New York doing theater and and I came out and it was such a whirlwind. I just thought this is the way TV shows went. Like you, you f I flew out for the test and went to set that same day. Like that just is crazy. I mean, you just don't do that. And, and I just kind of thought, oh, this is how fast it all works usually. And then I think with 
each season it, it kind of grew in exponentially so that by the time I got to the third season I we knew what a, a cult phenomenon but it was also you know at the same time as people the internet was kind of exploding like a lot of things were sort of happening at once and so the landscape of everyone's sort of daily lives was changing because it's like they could watch the show they could talk about the show they could and now that's just you know that's just everyday sort of experiences but now but back then it was very groundbreaking so it was a slow burn but then once we knew by third season yeah <laughs> yeah definitely and just to wrap up, have you had a favorite experience here in Monaco so far? Oh my gosh, I love this festival so much. I think it's just such a, a, a relaxed, lovely atmosphere to be in. I mean, yesterday, I have to say, we were at the, um, the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel, just jumping into the pool and feeling sand on the bottom. That is so revolutionary to me. <laughs> Kelly and I looked at each other like, Oh my God, who would have thought? That's brilliant. It's like saline pool and you got the sand underneath. It's great. <laughs> Perfect. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you.